If you've got pain in the front of your shoulder, right around this area, unless it's so severe where you feel like you should get checked out by the doctor, it doesn't really matter if it's biceps tendonitis, rotator cuff tendonitis, or impingement. What matters is you address the root causes, which can be compensations, muscle imbalances, poor posture, or poor dynamic alignment. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what those things are and give you four exercises to address these root causes so you can fix your front shoulder pain for good. Coach e from Precision Movement here, and today I'm gonna to help you get to the root causes of your front shoulder pain. And one thing that I wanted to say before we get into this video is do yourself a favor and do the exercises that I'm gonna show you in this video at least one time. If you do that, I bet you'll feel a little bit better and you might be inspired to continue on with the prescription, the frequency prescription that I'm gonna recommend in this video. Now, what I'm gonna show you here works whether you have a diagnosis or not. If you have really severe pain and you're worried about it, maybe get yourself checked out by a doctor first. But if you're just dealing with some nagging pain that comes and goes or you know, it's just been around for a little while and you can still do stuff, but you're sick of it and you wanna get rid of it, then this video is for you. Now, before we get into them, I just wanna give you a quick background on the root causes and what those might be. So it could come from four places. First, compensations. You could have some compensations going on for whatever reason, not gonna, not gonna get into the why, but an example of a compensation is maybe your pec minor is working more than your serratus anterior to protract your scapula. And with that, that leads to a bunch of problems, leads to impingement, and it's gonna have you with a painful front to shoulder. Number two, we've got imbalances, so muscular imbalances. You could have your upper traps working and be a lot stronger than your lower traps. This is a very common imbalance, especially with people who get stressed a lot, work at a computer, have poor posture. This is a very common imbalance that you find, so you gotta fix that up, because if you don't, it can lead to front shoulder pain. Number three, I just mentioned poor posture. If you've got bad posture, there's a number of different things that can occur, but anterior shoulder pain is one of those. And number four, dynamic alignment. Dynamic alignment is essentially your stability and maintaining good alignment and posture of your shoulder joint as you move your arm around. So if you have poor alignment, when you move your shoulder, you might run into impingement, you might run into certain muscles working more than others, and that can cause front shoulder pain. And any of these root causes can cause other issues as well. So what part of your body breaks down depends on what types of movement patterns you do in everyday life, what exercise you do, what sports you play, genetic predisposition. There's a number of different variables that can determine what part of your body breaks down. But regardless, you've got to address the root causes because if you don't, something is gonna break down sooner or later. So if you like that kind of explanation and that kind of background, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit like on this video because that's what we do here on the Precision Movement channel. Now, let's get moving. The first exercise we're gonna start with is the segmental thoracic spine mobilization. And this looks like your typical extensions over a foam roller, except we add a few different active components to make sure that we're getting some brain involved. So we're activating muscles, we're helping to create those neuromuscular pathways that helps you to maintain whatever extra range of motion you get from doing something like laying over a foam roller. If you just lay there, it's better than nothing, but if you add these active components, it makes it more effective. Time is money. So the more efficient you can be, the better. So you're starting off and you're gonna, when you do this, I'm gonna show one rep in one area. You're gonna do it in three or four areas of the spine. And I'll show you how to move it around, but start off on your lower thoracic spine. That's kind of right at the bottom of your shoulder blades. From here, I like hands at the temples, feet flat on the ground, and inhale as you extend over, and exhale as you curl up. From here down, so from the roller down essentially, nothing moves. So I'm not extending my low back here. I'm extending from the roller up, over. Now, if you've got a painful neck because you got weak neck muscles and really poor posture, then you can support your head more. But try to keep your hands at the temples if you can. That's the first move. You do three reps, flexions and extensions over the roller. Next, stay extended over the roller. 
and you're gonna do side bends. Think of moving your armpit towards your hip. And you do three reps, just breathing naturally on either side, staying extended. That's three there. And then bring the hands in a little bit, elbows in, stay extended over, and little rotations. Again, everything from the roller down stays still. The movement occurs from the roller up. Breathing naturally, going slow, and doing three reps on each side of the rotation. Then you slide, you roll yourself down a little bit so the roller travels up about an inch, you're up an inch above your th where you started. So you're going up your thoracic spine, you do about four areas, you do those three moves times three reps each, and that's gonna mobilize your thoracic spine into extension and address that poor posture root cause that you'll likely have because in today's society, almost everybody has poor posture. And the reason why this is good for anterior shoulder pain is because if you've got poor posture like this, your scapula, your shoulder blade has to be tilted forward. So anteriorly tilted and likely protracted. So it's sliding forwards and around your rib cage. In that position, whenever you lift your arm up, you're gonna impinge the bursitis, the bursa, or maybe the rotator cuff tendon, or maybe the biceps tendon. And over time, that's going to get irritated, inflamed, and painful. So poor posture is a fundamental component to so many different issues and definitely a fundamental component for anterior shoulder pain. The second exercise is active self myofascial release, ASMR, for the anterior shoulder. When you do this, don't do it right on the painful area. You're gonna do this more to the medial aspect of the painful area, which is gonna hit the pec minor and the pec major muscles. And these muscles, are, like I said before, can be imbalanced or can compensate. So the pec minor can compensate for a weak serratus anterior because the serratus anterior isn't working well or it's not strong. Then its job, one of its jobs is to protract the scapula. If it's not gonna be doing its job, something else has to come in and the pec minor can come in and work for a weak and dysfunctional serratus anterior. It also addresses the pec major. The pec major can do the same thing protract scapula to make up for a weak serratus anterior. And these muscles can also contribute to poor posture, rounding the shoulders, protracting the scapula. So it addresses a couple of those root causes that we talked about earlier. For this technique, you need a massage ball, or this is a massage ball, or you can get a lacrosse ball. Those are both good. And like I said, you're not gonna put it right on the painful area. You're gonna stick it on just on the inside of that, the medial aspect right into the pec minor muscle, under the collarbone. And then with my arm, what I like to do is I like to do, again, active movements so we create a better, uh, a more lasting effect by bringing the brain into the picture. So I'm putting some pressure here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach my arm back and try to roll my shoulder back this way. Now you can't see it too well, but I'm trying to roll my shoulder back as I'm maintaining the pressure. So I'm gonna keep driving my body into the ball here. So I'm just gonna to touch the wall and then reach, open the shoulder up and really apply that pressure. And that's gonna lengthen that pec minor. So you do that a couple times, two or three times. And then we can move it to a slightly different area. You know, I like to work right across the collarbone, under the collarbone, and then work into the belly of the pec major a little bit. Not too much into the pec major, you don't have to do the whole thing. Especially you women, you might have some trouble with that. But work the collarbone again, kind of wrap my body around it so I'm hugging the ball with my body and my shoulder and then I keep that pressure on as I roll the shoulder back, hands behind my back and really open that area up. So here we're going to do this for one to two minutes per side and I often get the question, you know, my right shoulder hurts, should I do things on the left side? Yes, definitely. Maintain your balance. So whatever reps or sets you do for your bad side, do the same for the good side. Now, if it's strength and balance, I might change it up a little bit from one side to the next, but I would still work the non-painful side. I might do one set as opposed to two or three for the painful side. So you just wanna keep all the muscles in your body active, and that's how you're going to keep yourself moving freely and without pain for the long term. Exercise number three, I call the lower trap activator because it activates the lower trapezius muscle. And as I said earlier, 
the upper trapezius is a common is commonly stronger than the lower trapezius relative to the lower trapezius. So working that lower trapezius is a good thing. This exercise also works the serratus anterior muscle as long as you do it correctly. So let's demonstrate. What you need is some kind of band. I've got a loop strength band here, some kind of resistance band. You hook it up so that it's about elbow level. If you don't have something exactly like this, string together a bunch of rubber elastic bands that come on broccoli. Buy $100 worth of broccoli so you can do it. Make it happen. This will help your anterior shoulder pain, your front shoulder pain, so do it. You stick your arm inside so it rests, the band rests just above your elbow. And then all you're doing, you don't need a ton of tension here, and it's not a big range of motion here. All you're doing is you're pulling the band down towards you, getting your elbow by your side, maintain good posture, good alignment, and then you're rolling the shoulder back so the shoulder blade tips that way. So this is my right shoulder blade, it's gonna tip if I'm turned this way, that way. So I pull the band in, maintain good posture, I'm not side bending or anything like that, and then I just roll the shoulder back just a little bit. Hold it for five seconds, and then slowly release the band. And then you do it again. You just pull the elbow into the side, roll the shoulder back. Think of rolling the shoulder blade that way, so it's posterior tilt of the shoulder blade. If you got a cup of water on the shoulder blade, you're dumping it behind you, and then releasing slowly. Let me show you this view. You pull the band down, elbows to my side, and then I'm just doing that. I'm not rowing, I'm not rowing like this, creating my elbow behind my body. My elbow stays in line with my body, and I'm tilting the shoulder blade that way. Another cue I use is suck the shoulder blade into your rib cage. What you're doing is you're activating the lower trapezius and the serratus anterior, and those two muscles are really important for proper scapulohumeral rhythm. That's the rhythm that your shoulder blade moves as your arm moves, your humerus, this is the bone in here, as your arm moves around, up and down and wherever it wants to go. You need a good rhythm there. If you don't have a good rhythm, then that's when impingement can happen or some muscles can overwork relative to others and you get that anterior shoulder pain or some other problem appears. So this exercise, lower trap activator, very important, very subtle. Again, it's elbows down, and then it's that movement there. And that's it, nothing else moves. Breathe naturally and do it for two to three sets of four to six reps, holding down there for five to 10 seconds. And that's gonna help to restore the, those imbalances that are often present in the shoulder. The fourth and final exercise I have to fix your front shoulder pain for good is one of my favorites called the shoulder rotation robot. Here we go, step back to the wall, feet away from the wall and maintain a neutral spine. Now, if you can get your head on the wall, then do so. Then we're gonna set ourselves, our shoulders in good position. We're gonna bring our shoulders back a little bit, pinch the shoulder blades together and set ourselves up in good alignment, in the alignment that we wanna train and maintain. From here, I'm gonna bring my elbows out, away from my sides just a little bit and then making fists, one arm goes up, one arm goes down. Now the elbows don't move and the shoulders don't move. So my shoulders are back against the wall, my shoulder blades are together and we've got that little posterior tilt. And I'm maintaining that all as I try to get my hand to the wall on both sides, above and below. Now I don't care if you can get your hand to the wall or not. What matters is the intention and what matters is maintaining the proper posture and alignment. Hold for about five seconds, trying the whole time to get closer to the wall. And then when it's time to switch, my shoulders don't move, my shoulder blades don't move, and I rotate slowly under control with big intention of maintaining muscular activation in through the shoulders. Again, I'm trying to get my hands to the wall, but I don't care if they don't touch. And I'm trying as hard as I can the whole time I'm holding there. Breathing naturally. Don't go into hyperextension of the, your low back. Keep your low back relaxed, relatively relaxed. I mean, it's gonna, muscles around the core are gonna be working. And I'm going slowly, holding for about five seconds or longer. And it's key that I go slow and maintain activation and positioning and posture as I'm rotating. 
When you're done, what I like to do is maintain positioning, slowly bring your arms to your sides, and then come off the wall, and then gradually relax the muscles, just to teach my body to maintain position through different movements and posture. Those are really key components. The one thing I was stressing there, I was stressing a few things, there's a few key cues there, but as you're rotating, you're not going quickly. You're going slow. And the reason why you do that is, one, to teach your body to control every degree of range of motion and to maintain that alignment and to work those rotator cuff muscles, the internal rotators and the external rotators through every degree of range of motion. So we're teaching your body to be stable in all of those movements. And number two is so you can detect if you're coming off the wall. If you're just going fast, who knows what you're doing? You could be in all these different positions. But when you go slow, you can do body scans and think, oh, my shoulders, are they back to the wall? Are my shoulder blades pinched together with posterior tilt? Is my low back relaxed? Is my neck relaxed? I'm not tensing my neck for no reason. Are my shoulders staying down, not hiking into my ears? You, can, you have time to body scan. If you go too quickly, you don't have time to correct these errors in posture and alignment. So that's why I recommend you go slow. For the ro robot, do two to three sets, three to five reps, holding for five seconds. So one rep is up here and down there. Do that and it's gonna make a big difference in your dynamic alignment and your posture. If you've watched this far and you haven't done anything yet, do the exercises for the sets and reps prescribed. To summarize, we started with the segmental T-spine mobilization. You're doing three to four areas, three different moves, three reps each. Then you move to active self myofascial release for the anterior shoulder. Do that for one to two rep minutes per side. The third exercise was the lower trap activator. Do that for two to three sets of four to six reps, holding for five seconds. And you finish off with the shoulder rotation robot. Do two to three sets to three to five reps, holding for five seconds. And if you do this routine daily for a week, and then you could drop it down to maybe three times a week for three weeks, I bet even after the first time you do it, you'll feel better. But if you do it for that prescription, you're gonna feel like you haven't had shoulder pain in the longest time. So that's what we have for you today. If you like that video, why don't you join the other 520 something thousand people who have subscribed and hit that subscribe button. I don't know by the time you're watching it, but how many it's gonna be, but that's how many it is now. And we've got some other content for you. So start with that and then check out some other stuff. Got some videos here and here that will help you with front shoulder pain. And if you want our best, most comprehensive program that you can imagine for shoulder pain, get the shoulder pain solution. Because it's based on all the principles that I just taught you today, but includes many more exercises broken up into multiple phases and different routines to get you out of shoulder pain for good. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon. Peace.